last, you seven left. Uh, we do not have a gate yet, so you might want to figure out some place for us to park while we sort it out. So at 6.30, go around. I'm kidding. Expect to exit the second high speed November 2. Delta 630, you're spending land on a C7 left. Send us around, Delta 630 is on the go. What's up, guys, and welcome to ATC Point of View. If you're new to the channel, my name is Lex, and thanks for joining me. If you'd like to support this channel, consider becoming a member by hitting the join button down below. Members get early access to videos, get member badges, and so much more. I'm really just trying to create a community where pilots, air traffic controllers, and even those who are just interested in aviation, where we can all communicate, interact with one another, where we share thoughts and ideas on things. So if you're interested, consider joining the uh, downwind, that's what I like to call it, and become a part of this team. In this video, we're going to show some great examples of what not to do as a pilot, air traffic controller, and even as a civilian. So let's check it out. Hotel Tower, 507 Tango Hotel at uh, 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 Putin Runway 25 right, LS, uh, localized approach, 507 Tango Hotel. No, for 507 Tango Hotel, the economy is Tower, runway 25 right, clear for low approach. Uh, 25 right, clear for low approach, 507 Tango Hotel. Tower, just to report, uh, someone is shooting some laser just uh, north of the field there, green light. No, we're just going to tell when able to find more information from you in regards to the green laser. So north of the field, assuming off your right side. Affirmative, 537 Tango Hotel, it was just on the uh, last portion of the final approach course there. 537 Tango Hotel, trumpeting 210, contact departure. Uh, hiding 210, contact departure, 507 Tango Hotel. Good evening. Blue Street 5307, 5 miles outside Diak, inbound ILS 25 right. Blue Street 307, runway 25 right, clear to land. Runway 25 right, clear to land, Blue Street 5307. Blue Street 5307, use caution, there's somebody shooting a laser just to the right side of the runway near the approach end. Blue Street 5307. Blue Street 5307 is clearing at November 4, sir, and uh, we did have a laser illumination. It looked like it was the edge of that Riddle campus there. Okay, thank you, sir. Text the ramp. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we'll text the ramp. Hopefully you get those guys, because apparently we had a uh, cheap pilot riding the jump seat one night, and the uh, first officer, I guess, got injured. Okay, I'm on the line right now. Stay by. Thank you, sir. We did, we did not have any injuries tonight, though. Good. Round up 10. Yes, sir. I'm at uh, November 6th without any uh, lights flashing. I'd like to go ahead and uh, manu uh, go across uh, November, go across 1 6 and see if I can drive over there. Roger, go ahead and proceed on November. Proceed on November. Uh, clear to cross 1 6. Cross 1 6, yes, sir. And it, it was north of Bellevue. I'm, my mistake. I'm looking at the, the, the uh, lights out there, the, the uh, traffic lights. Roger, I'm just going to go with Romeo 1, and I'll go along the fence without any of my uh, red lights on. So these laser illumination events typically happen most during takeoffs and landings, because that's when the planes are most visible to the idiots that try to flash lasers at them. And it's also the two most critical phases of flight, so it's extremely dangerous. It's been a growing trend in the past few years, and as you see on this diagram, it's been steadily growing since 2018. And then you have a giant leap in 2021 for reported laser incidents. So the numbers are probably a lot higher because not all of them get reported. A lot of people may not know, but this became a federal crime when the president signed the FAA Modernization and Reform Act of 2012. And as you see here, it reads, whoever knowingly aims the beam of a laser pointer at an aircraft or the flight path of such aircraft shall be fined or imprisoned for up to five years or both. A lot of people think it's funny or that it's harmless, but as that last pilot stated, it can cause injury, it can disorient pilots or distract them as well. And you got to think, you got passengers in the back seat and you're putting the lives of a lot of innocent people at risk. So moral of the story is don't do it. So let's continue. Just a four echo kilo, right turn on echo, contact ground one two one point eight. It's the next right turn, the right turn right next to you. You need to make it turn right now. 
Echo Kilo, you got it. Exit the uh, runway and then call ground on 121.8. Two, one Echo Kilo, you got it. It looks like you're now making a 180. Frontier 667, go around. Go around, 667. Cessna 4 Echo Kilo, where, what are you doing now, man? Uh, I, I missed it. I couldn't get out of the echo. Uh, we've already passed it. Yeah, you weren't, but go down to the next one. Go down to Delta, and then taxi into Signature on Charlie. So really, this one can go either way. If you look at it from the pilot's perspective, his speed might have been too fast, and that's why he couldn't make the taxiway. And he decided to make a 180 on the runway to get to it. However, whenever you choose to make a 180 on the runway, you should always notify the air traffic controller before you do so. Because if he did, the air traffic controller probably would have been, hey, keep your speed up, turn right next taxiway. That way, the aircraft on final wouldn't have to go around. So now looking at it from the air traffic controller's perspective, this is all she do all day, every day. And based on her judgment, aircraft speed was fine for him to make that right turn and get off the runway. So really, you know, it's it's just a matter of perspective. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, whose side you're on. So let's continue. Tower Delta 630 Heavy, Delta 7 left. Delta 630 Heavy, Atlanta Tower, Wind 23014, runway 27 left, to the land. Seven left. Uh, we do not have a gate yet, so we might want to figure out some place for us to park while we sort it out. So at 6:30, go around. I'm kidding. Go at 6:30. If you're landing, I got no one behind you. Expect to exit right to second high speed. We'll, we'll hide you out somewhere down by Pop. At 6:30, heavy. You copy? Sorry, taking. Expect to exit the second high speed number two. Delta 630, you're still landing on a 27 left. You turn us around, Delta 630 on the go. Air traffic controllers and pilots have always had a very unique relationship. This is one of the few jobs where you have two people who most likely have never met or talked to each other before. But somehow, on initial contact, you have pilots instill complete trust and confidence in an air traffic controller. So it's a very unique responsibility that an air traffic controller possesses. So that's why the pilot did not hesitate when the air traffic controller gave him a go around. Yes, the pilot could have said, Tower, verify you want us to go around. But the transmission was clear and the situation could have been life threatening. I know sometimes we joke around with one another, but there are certain situations where it is not appropriate. And this was one of them. The air traffic controller showed poor judgment and I'm sure he learned a very, very valuable lesson that day. Well, guys, thanks for watching this video all the way to the end. If you haven't done so already, hit the like, subscribe button. If you want to become a member, don't forget to hit the join button down below. There's some great things coming to this channel, and I'm actually working on a live stream for this channel through an air traffic control simulated system known as VATSIM. VATSIM is basically connected to Microsoft Flight Simulator, X-Plane, and some other flight simulated uh, platforms. And those pilots will be able to talk to me and I'll be the air traffic controller and I'll give them instructions as if it was in real life. So during the live stream, you guys will be able to see all that. I'll talk you guys through it and uh, give you uh, reasons why I make certain decisions. And you'll be able to ask me questions as well. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that. As always, peace.